Um, congratulations to Tom um, in Texas for playing a really good game. Thought they had a really good game plan and their kids were ready to ready to battle and play and um, they took it to us. Uh, I um, disappointed in in the loss, disappointed in the outcome, not disappointed in in the resolve and effort of our players, not disappointed uh, in the fact that um, um, you know, we played 10 football games this year when uh, not many people did play that many games. And for our guys to, to battle with all the adversity that they faced, uh, whether it be injuries to COVID, to opt-outs, to transfers, to uh, everything that those kids faced, um, they came to work every day and they battled and, and uh, were disappointed. Um, there's some things we have to get a lot better at. We've talked about that. Uh, we talked about that in the locker room. Uh, all that being said, we were probably three points away prior to this game of making this game have a really big factor um, against Texas, potentially to go on to bigger, better things. But uh, uh, those are ifs and buts, and we didn't close on those those couple games we had the opportunity to. So, um, you know, we'll bounce back. Uh, our kids have really good resolve. I don't know what seniors are going to do, so we won't even go there. We'll go that route and talk about it, but. Uh, uh, the guys that are coming back, I told them we needed to be better as coaches, and uh, we will, and players needed to be better, and they needed to take ownership uh, for the program because that's when we'll turn the corner is when the kids take the ownership of the program and not the coaches, and, and uh, we have enough of the right guys coming back that I believe that that can happen. Start at Raquel's. Yeah, Chris, as a defensive-minded coach, what's just the most frustrating thing about a game like that? Well, we couldn't stop them, uh, for sure. We ran out of players. Uh, didn't have uh, Eli Sullivan after the play three. Uh, didn't have J-Mac in the second half. Uh, the next guy up, it's got to step up, and we need to be better. We need to be better in, in the back seven. Uh, we need to be better tackling up front. Um, it was, uh, and all that being said, give Texas credit. That running back's a great player. The quarterback, in my mind, is the best quarterback in the league. And they're really big offensively up front. And uh, we didn't do a good enough job stopping them. And um, we have to get bigger. We have to get stronger. We have to get heavier. We have to do all those things because we were mismatched today. And uh, just big picture, to end the season with five straight losses, does it make you reevaluate the way you do some things in the offseason? I don't know how you can even ask that, Kellis. We didn't have an offseason last year. That's a tough one for me to answer. Um, we reevaluate everything, whether we win five in a row, lose, lose one in a row, lose five in a row. Um, but when we didn't have an offseason and didn't have a summer, it's a tough one to answer. All right, thanks, Chris. Appreciate it. John? I guess, Chris, kind of uh, along those same lines, how much of the way the season ended do you just attribute to COVID issues and attrition and some things catching up to you guys? Well, part of it, for sure, because we were one of the few that played every week and uh, played our scheduled games. And um, we didn't have enough bodies, but I thought it was really important for our guys to play. Our seniors wanted to play. Uh, all that being said, with the players that, that, that are out there, they've got K-State on their chest. They've got to come out and, and play and play well. And um, we have to continue to recruit. We have to continue to develop because um, we're not as close as we are from the fact that we had two games and we lost by a total of three points. We're still a long ways away as far as getting kids, um, not to buy in, but getting kids to be bigger, faster, stronger, um, and uh, that's that's got to be them making the commitment to say, you know what, I wasn't as good as the kid I went across uh, against today or last week or two weeks ago and whatever it was, and I have to take that ownership of myself and get to be bigger and stronger. When you have a game with tackling problems like that, is any of that effort related? No, it's poor cup, poor leverage, not strong enough, not physical enough, not heavy enough. Appreciate it, Chris. Jackson. Yeah, Coach, uh, with as fast as Texas got out to a start offensively, I, I felt like your team really responded well, especially in the second quarter. Uh, I just wanted your thoughts on that and how, how your team responded from that quick start and how they finished the half. Yeah, I was really pleased with our offense. We, had, we turned the ball over, which we can't do, but when we didn't turn it over, 
we really moved the ball at, at will. Um, and we were able to run it. We were able to throw it. We had them off balance. I thought Mess did a great job uh, of, of play calling. And uh, as poorly as we played, it's 31-17 at half. And I don't know if the game was that close, but it was 31-17. And we got to come out and get a stop in the third quarter and give ourselves the ball because I think we have some really good things going offensively. And then it just, it, I mean, we came back out and they said J-Mac couldn't go and Eli couldn't go. So we're kind of piecing it together in the back seven. Um, and uh, it wasn't good enough and we have to be better. And um, that's the frustrating thing is offensively, we did some really good things to give ourselves a chance, but we couldn't get off the field. And we didn't, for the first time, um, since I've been here, I know we got uh, beaten the special teams game for sure. And then just with Deuce and how big his impact has been this season, uh, for him to have a game like he did today, I'm sure that has to do a lot for his confidence. But what does that give for you confidence-wise in him moving forward? Well, we have a running back for sure for the next three years or however long Deuce is going to be here because he's an impact guy. Um, he can catch the ball. He can run the ball. He's, he gets tough yards. He does everything. But we just have to have more guys uh, step up both sides of the ball like like Deuce that love the game, that want to be great, that watch as, as much film or more film than, than almost anybody on the team. So there's a reason why he's successful. He, he knows what the defense is going to do because he sees pictures pre-snap. Uh, and, and I think a lot of our guys can learn from – uh, from Deuce to say, I, I don't just go out there and play. I have extreme, extreme talent, but I take that talent and take it to another level by um, mastering my opponent. I, I watch every film and every um, uh, intricacy of the defense, so I know how people are going to react, and that's how you become successful. It, it's that's not by chance. That's that kid that loves the game, um, studies the game, and plays the game the right way. Thanks, Coach. Got three hands raised. We'll go through those, starting with Michael. Yeah, Chris, what went into the decision to start Elijah Sullivan in the secondary? Um, last Sunday when he was finally eligible to play from, from his COVID issues, um, I made the decision on Sunday that we were going to move him uh, to safety and uh, didn't get him to practice until Wednesday. But uh, I thought he gave us the best chance to win, putting he and J-Mac back there. Uh, I thought Cody and, and Deuce had played well enough to, to deserve continued playing time. So between those two and, and Justin Hughes, I thought we had three linebackers. I thought we had some issues in the secondary uh, over the last few weeks. And I wanted to give our secondary some more life, somebody that could really come up and smack you and tackle. And so, Eli did this all in, in two and a half days, and uh, I was so excited to watch him because I think potentially at the next level, that's what the kid could be. And unfortunately, he gets maybe two plays, three plays, makes a big hit on the sideline and, and doesn't come back. You see the same uh, Will Howard in practice that you do in games? Yeah, I think um, Will uh, learned. He grew so much this year. Uh, he he became stronger mentally, became stronger physically. Um, I, I'm I'm thrilled that we have Will Howard getting his freshman year over, and the amount of snaps that he took, and the amount of hits that he took, and he and he hung in there. He delivered some strikes. Yep, he made some mistakes, but most freshmen are going to make mistakes, and and he'll grow and continue to learn from those things. But. Uh, you know, Will Howard's a, a winner, and, and Will Howard is going to play a ton of football here. And I, I thought he ran the ball well. I thought he had some throws that he probably would want back. Uh, but I thought, I thought he threw some strikes, too. And do you feel like he values possessions in the ball when he's in practice versus games? Well, he needs to continue to to value the ball in general. I don't care if it's practice and games and stuff. And and. Um, we know as, as a staff and we know as an offense that we cannot turn the football over, especially when we're not stopping people on defense um, because we can't give them easy possessions and easy scores. And um, I'm not going to beat up on an 18-year-old kid that's playing his tail off and trying like a son of a gun and giving us a chance to be successful and putting 31 points up on the board. 
he's going to be fine. And, and uh, I was excited about his growth this year. Thank you, Chris. John. Hey, Chris, does today reinforce to you that Malik has, has kind of turned a corner? Yeah, Malik was healthy the last two weeks and played really good football. Um, and, you know, we were trying to get him the ball on some crossing routes. We are trying to get him the ball on some different things in the jet game. We saw that last week. That was a healthy Malik. Um, you know, last week was a different game plan. And uh, this week we saw uh, a guy that uh, practiced all week. The week before he didn't. This week he practiced all week. And um, I think Malik's an extremely talented guy. Uh, he's a very confident guy, and when we get him involved like we did today, uh, he's an impact player, and, and that's what we have to have. We, if we can have an impact wide receiver, an impact running back, um, and, and surround our offense around those two guys and continue to improve it everywhere else, uh, I like our future. Appreciate it. Last one here, Kellis. I don't know if you really can put it into words, but just now that it's over, how hard was it dealing with COVID for 10 straight weeks or however long this was? Um, hardest thing I've ever dealt with in coaching, with, without question. Not knowing from one week to the next who is going to be eligible, um, to, to kids getting pulled out of meetings, um, kids missing games, kids, you know, Morris Brown shows up on, on Thursday of this week and practices 10 snaps, and then we get banged up, so he's got to play. He's a true freshman. He's not ready to play on that stage without practicing. You know, Eli Huggins played 35 snaps and showed up on Saturday uh, before we played Texas Tech and hadn't seen him for two weeks. Um, we lose tackles, lose guards, lose linebackers. I mean, none of nobody can prep you for any of those things, and that's why I'm so – proud of the resolve of our guys because they fought and fought and the kids that are in that locker room, the ones that stuck with us through this whole year and, and through all the adversity, they're going to grow. They're going to learn from it. They're going to, it's going to help them later in life because if you can fight through an adversity of what we had this season, you can fight through anything.